Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products. And on today's video, we're going to be taking out a bunch of these alders. I got several different alder thickets around the property. We're just getting ready to replant here in a couple weeks. So I wanted to thin out a bunch of these alders. I'm not going to take all of them out, but I want to thin them out so that I can get some evergreens, some conifers planted in underneath and uh, have those, those evergreens grow up through as the alders get bigger and then die off. Alders don't live very long. Uh, so I wanted to get some trees established underneath them. So I'm going to start with this little thicket here behind me. I'll do kind of a before walkthrough and an after walkthrough. But the whole goal is to get enough alders out of the way, all the small suppressed ones, so the sunlight can get down onto the forest floor and uh, and have enough uh, light so those, those evergreens can grow up through um, as the alders mature. So I'll just take a quick little walk through here. And you can see... The alders are pretty thick in here. These weren't planted. These are all uh, natural reprod. But just showing you, here's a here's an alder. This is one of the mature ones. This is one of the ones I'm going to leave. It's probably eight or ten inches across. But then right over here, you got a bunch that are just little tiny ones. These are maybe two or three inches across. They don't go up. If you can see, they're suppressed so that the tops of these trees are quite a bit under. The tops of the other ones there and so they're they're just not going to make it they're they're too crowded they're suppressed and so you can see that one that one that one will probably take out a bunch of little ones over here leave that big one probably take that one out there uh, but we're going to take out probably 80 percent of the trees in here and like i say get it opened up get some some sun down on the forest floor here's a little seedling i planted last year just as as a tester and it died within the first couple months. It just didn't get enough enough sun to, to get it growing enough. Um, and then here's another example. These are both pretty mature trees, but they're growing way too close to each other. They're within a foot of each other. So I'm gonna pick the better, the better of the two trees, probably the one on the left. It's a little bit straighter. Uh, and we'll get this, we'll get this one here cut out. So we'll open up this one and, uh, and get it going. And here's the after. So I got all the alders that I wanted out of there on the ground. Our spacing is probably 10 feet, which realistically is still a little bit close, but I think we got her opened up enough so that some of our seedlings can have a fighting chance. Looking up, there's, there's some sky visible, so hopefully some light will get down through in, in here. But that's kind of the idea. Now we can come in and plant. Well, I'm going to plant a bunch of cedar in here because it does better in the low light conditions. Doug fir really needs to be planted out in the sun. But that kind of gives you an idea of what I left. Now a lot of guys are probably saying, well, why don't you just take them all out? Just cut them all down, reprod with Doug fir and be done with it. Um, it's a good question. 
I really kind of like the, the diversity. Keeping a few of the alders in kind of helps with, you know, the diversity of the canopy. A little bit different trees in there, get a mixed forest. This isn't necessarily going to be, you know, a working forest. I'm not planning on necessarily having a 40-year harvest rotation. And so I just like to kind of spread things out, get some cedar and hemlock in here, get some dug fur out in the open, and uh, we'll kind of get our, our forest regrowing here. And get some trees growing and uh, then you know my my grandkids or my great grandkids can figure out what they want to do with it if they want to log it and get some money out of it that's fine if they want to keep it as a park or you know a carbon bank or whatever they're doing in a hundred years then uh, they'll have the option but like the old saying goes the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the second best time is now so I'm I'm taking the initiative here and getting some trees in the ground Here's one of the, probably the biggest alders I cut down. And I counted these rings out. This tree was 18 years old. And let's see if I can measure it here. Get up there a foot. It's about nine inches across. So that's grown about half an inch a year in diameter. Um, so they grow pretty fast. They grow fast um, and they grow quick. And let's go take another look at a, another one here. So here's another one. I counted these rings. It also has 18 inches, so it's the same age. And it's about five inches diameter there. So uh, it's only grown about a quarter inch diameter a year. And when you get all these trees in here real tight like this, they compete for light and they compete for water. And so you're gonna have different uh, growths. And so what we've done, if you're gonna manage to stand for alder is we've opened up all the canopy, none of the branches are touching each other. And so we've, we've released these trees. So now they can pack on half or three quarters of an inch of diameter a year. Um, but it's a good little, I mean, the site's only 50 feet square, but it's a good little example of uh, a thinning process. We've got all these trees now opened up and uh, they can grow quite a bit faster and we're gonna do a little bit of a unique thing by planting some conifers down in here get them started so that in the, the alders live about 50 to 75 years and so these guys have maybe you know 50 years left in their life cycle and so when these start getting big and falling over we'll have conifers already planted that'll be 30 or 40 years old 50 years old they can uh, just re replace the, the alders as they as they uh, die out Here's kind of a little spot behind me I wanted to show you. You've got some hemlock here and then a cedar back back in there. And you've got all these little birch and alder growing up around them. And so like I was mentioning earlier, the, the hemlock and the cedar, they can grow in the, they're shade tolerant. They can grow in the shade, but we're gonna release those. So I'm gonna cut all these birch and alder out of here and release those trees so they get a bunch more sunlight. They don't have the competition from the birch and the alder and they're gonna start packing on wood really quick. And we, I wanna encourage the, the evergreens, the conifers, um, cause I like, that, I like that type of forest better. And the trees live a lot longer and they'll grow up and shade out everything and, and uh, have a real nice mature forest in here with evergreens. So I'll get all these cut around out here, uh, release these um, evergreens and show you what it looks like. Okay, we got those hemlocks and, and cedar opened up and you can see how much more light they're gonna have. And they, those trees may be 10, 15 years old and they're six, eight, 10 feet tall because they've been growing under that suppressed canopy for a while. So now that they're all opened up, they're gonna take off and they can grow uh, one, two, even three feet a year, some of them. That cedar, it's nice. It's gotten up above the blackberries. There's a bunch of Himalayan blackberries back there, which are invasive species. So it's above those, it's above all the deer browse and, and now that tree can, can just grow and grow. Well, now I'm gonna take my skitter and I'm gonna try and clear a lot of this brush and all this junk and out from under the, the understory so we can get down to some soil so we can start planting. Uh, this is where they left a bunch of trees, but it's still pretty thin. I mean, we can probably infill twice as many trees as what they got. So we're gonna try and knock down a bunch of this uh, salmonberry and blackberry and stuff so we can get our planters in here.
Well, here's a little walk through close up. And dang, that worked pretty good. All that stuff got mashed down. I found that uh, going out, just skimming the surface and then back blading back across seemed to work the best. But it used to look like that. And that's six or eight feet high blackberries and salmon berries and junk. And now we're down to some nice soil. And there's a nice, beautiful spot to plant right there. So I'll just kind of, it's just kind of like mowing the lawn. You just go back and forth. And, but we're getting everything knocked down so we can get some seedlings in here. We're out in a little bit of, of a different spot here. And you can see behind me, there's this whole field full of reed canary grass, which is incredibly invasive here in the Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> and it's really hard to get rid of. And what it does is it comes into an area and it, and it grows up and just mats down over everything and just kind of spreads its way as far as it can go. Uh, but it's, uh, it's shade intolerant. And so my hope is, is if I can get all this planted in evergreens and have them grow up and get up above the six or eight feet of canary grass in the spring and summer, then they can get up mature and shade out all this canary grass and kill all of it. And it'll turn back into a forest in the next 20, 30, 40 years. So I'm going to try and take my skitter. I've, I've gone through here a couple swipes and just rough it up. Um, we'll go take a look here. It's, it gets to where it, it forms a mat and it's all spongy. And it just, you got to dig down like six, eight, ten inches to get down. I don't know if you can see there, but it's just, it's just mats and mats of canary grass. So I've tried to come through with my skitter a little bit and scrape off some of it down to mineral soil. Let me turn the camera around here. So get it scraped down in spots to soil, like here's a good patch. And, uh, you know, just so the planters can come in and have somewhere to just plant and, and keep moving. I'm going to plant it pretty heavy in here, maybe six, eight, ten foot spacing. So we can get that shade going hopefully really quick and then I'll come in and thin in the next 10, 15 years. But I don't have to scrape it all down to dirt. I just need to get spots, you know, like here and here, back over there and here, here, where you can just plop a tree in the ground. And then for the next couple of years, I'll have to come in and nurse them a little bit and make sure the, the uh, grass doesn't take them over. But we'll get this scraped off. I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to scrape off maybe two-thirds or three-quarters of it, but I'm going to leave a patch back over here in uh, thick canary grass and try and plant direct direct in the canary grass and see if um, see if maybe, I mean, if you don't need to do all this scraping off, that would be an advantage to someone who doesn't have a skid or a dozer or something. Um, so anyway, that's what we're working on now. I've scraped over here underneath some of these alders. And, you know, like, here's a good example. This patch of alders right here, there's maybe 10 in that patch. And there's only enough room for one or two, maybe. So I'm going to come through and cut out most of those. I'll probably leave this big one here in the end and maybe that big one right there. But get all those other ones out of there, release those big ones. Same with over here. You've got 20 or 30 trees in there when there really should be three to five. So I'll get those all cut out, just lay them down, they'll rot quick. And uh, that way we can replant all under there and get all this grown up in, in forest. Every once in a while there's a, there's, a, there's a hemlock here growing up. Here's a spruce right against the sun. You won't be able to see much of it. But the trees grow here. I mean, it's not, it's not a matter of if the trees will grow here. It's just getting them started in, in all this canary, reed canary grass, which is a real bugger.
Well, I'm trying a little bit of a new technique here. This canary grass is so thick that I can't just blade it off. And if I did, I'd end up with a mountain of it. And I don't want to deal with that over on the edges of the, the planting field here. So what I was doing, I don't know if you can see from the video, I was just coming along in first gear and I drop my blade and push for about three feet and then lift up and that, that pile would flop right in front. And then I'd, as soon as that pile went off, I'd drop my blade again and scrape, lift, scrape, lift. And what I got is some nice planting areas about three or four feet square every 10 or 12 feet, which may be a little bit more than I wanted, but I mean, it's down, it's down to dirt. I mean, look at that. It's nice dirt. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, I guess I'd miss, miss one. There's a little bit of a hump here, but there's enough where I can get scraped down here and get a tree in there. But I just kind of went along and went scrape and then I lifted, get a little pile of junk, scrape, lifted, pile of junk, scrape, lifted, pile of junk. And so I've got all these, there's one, I've, I've done three passes so far. There's one, there's one, and there's one. And so I'm just kind of going back and forth. And uh, this seems to be a real good solution. Here's what happened when I was scraping it. And like I think I showed you earlier, it's mostly just grass. And then every once in a while I'd scrape down to bare dirt, like in this spot and that spot, and you, you get little patches, but you're still gonna be fighting a lot of grass in here. So I like this little dip in the blade and scraping up into little mounds and piles because you put a tree right in the middle of this and it may take a couple of years for the grass to encroach again. I know there's probably roots down there and so it'll come up its first year right in there. But um, yeah, man, this is this is a breakthrough here. We got a breakthrough for for our planting stuff and now like i say you know the the planters now oh, they got bare mineral dirt they just come through and they just start putting trees in the ground every every 10 feet 12 feet yeah it's working pretty good I got another patch of alders thinned out. There's what it looks like after. And if I turn around here, there's what it looked like before. Just dog hair thick in there. And uh, I couldn't, if, if I planted any conifers in there at all, they'd all just die. There's nothing that could live in there. So I got it all opened up. You can see the field in the background there. That's where all the canary grass is. So um, hopefully in the next couple weeks, well, in the next couple of weeks, we'll get her planted. I got 1,400 seedlings coming. And one more thing I forgot to mention about these alder, these red alder, um, they're a nitrogen fixer. And so there's been some studies done about um, actually planting alder in amongst the conifers and letting them grow for 10 or 15 years and uh, essentially fertilizing the, the uh, evergreens. But I, I don't, I mean, I got standing alders and I'll plant some hemlock and some uh, cedar underneath and maybe a few dugs fur in the brighter spots, but we'll get a forest going back here again. So uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.